back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today um, I am making this extra large face scrubby. It's a really nice and thick one. I was looking at some of my first videos that I posted which was a couple of um, face pads and in one of them I am making this one. Um, I thought I would do an updated version for you with new yarn and a slightly different design but still the same puff stitch design. So I hope you enjoy this video. Please do um, like my video if you are watching as one of my trusted watchers from my Ophelia Talks family but also if you are new to my family do please subscribe because it's always nice to have you. So let's get started. Here we have uh, Cotton Soft by King Cole in the colour Apricot. Um, I like this range because it's a really nice soft cotton so I'm going to get started with making a slip knot like so. I insert my hook and make the loop a tiny bit smaller. Then I'm going to chain four, two, three, four. Then you go back to the first chain and you insert and you make sure that you have everything where it's supposed to be <laughs> and you pull through the yarn so you make a little circle. Then you are going to chain two. I chain two, you might need to chain three depending on your tension. You yarn over and you insert into the circle, you pull up the yarn and you pull up as high as you can. You keep all these loops on your hook, you yarn over and you go back into that circle pulling up again as high as you can. You do that three times. So another go. There we go. Right, then you yarn over. So you have seven loops on your hook here. And you pull through all the loops on your hook. And you do a chain one. So yarn over into that circle. Pull up a loop and keep pulling as high as you can. Yarn over into the circle. Pull, pull, pull. Yarn over into the circle, pull up a loop and pull, pull, pull. Yarn over and pull through all the loops on your hook. Chain one. Okay, so this is the puff stitch. It's going to use a bit more yarn than what you are used to. So get your, get your cotton ready and a little bit of fluff there. And we do the same thing each time. So you yarn over, you insert, you pull up a loop and you pull th up really nice and high until you have seven loops on your hook. Then you yarn over and you pull it through and you chain one. So we're going to do that six times. And as you can see I sort of use my finger there to hold everything that I have on my hook to hold it sort of back a bit to make it easier to manipulate. So we have one, two, three, four, five and we need to do another one into that same hole. There we go. That's another puff stitch there. And we do a chain. And now we are going to find the top of the puff stitch here where we started. So skip those chains here and go under the V there. And that will make sure that those do a slip stitch. Those chains are sort of at the back a bit more. So this is your first round. Now we are going to do a slip stitch in into the next sort of chain space. Uh, because that's where we are going to be working from. So we're going to be working into the chain spaces in between the puff stitches. Do two chains. Once again we start with doing the puff stitch. Pulling up really well. 
it's sort of a little bit of a different movement with your hand. There we go, pull through all the seven loops and chain one. So in each chain space, we are now going to do two puff stitches. So we went from six puff stitches to 12, chain one. Don't forget your chain one. And also make sure you're in the sort of right position when you insert in between those puff stitches. And after a while it gets a little bit sort of habit, but if you're not sure, just stop and count the loops on your hook. I mean, I am doing three loop overs, that's fine, you know, you can do that, but there is more or less, but don't mix them because you will see the thickness of your puffs will be different. Okay, into the next location there, and pulling up the yarn. There we go. You sort of have to do a bit bigger movements than what you're used to. There we are, look. Into the next location. Go. And don't forget the chain in between. Where am I here? There we go. Voila. Another one. That's my cat on his scratch pole. <laughs> Honestly. They were asleep just now. I always wake up when I hit the button. Record. <laughs> and another one. There we go. Okay. So just make sure you have two puffs in each location. In six locations. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And then once again here we've got that chain. So we're going to just skip that. And we go and find a V on top of that puff there and we close up the round making sure that that sort of V, um, that ch little chain then sort of is overlooked and goes to the back. Now in the next round we should increase by 2, 1, 2, 1 but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do 2, 2, 2, 2, 2 and then at the end I might just have to do the 1 but that's okay. So once again... I am going to do a slip stitch into the space where we are going to be working, so in between the puffs, and I'm doing that chain, and there we go, off again for doing two puffs and a chain in each location. Puff and a chain, and we go to the next location. There we go. And each time we pull up three times. There we are. See? And we continue like this until the end of the round. So we've gone from six puffs to twelve. And now, mm, that's a little bit, see, sometimes that was a little bit too loose, that puff. Um, so now we should be going to 24 puffs, but I think I will stop at 23. Um, you will see that it will make a nice dense face pad. And the last bit is just, you know, there is not enough space for the second puff. You could do it, but... I didn't in my sample. You could do less puffs. Oh, something split there. Okay, again. See, this is what happens, but I'm keeping it real here. 
And yeah, there is something there that's split. I think it's in the row below. So let's be careful. Let's use the nail to hold it back a bit. There we go. That's it. I am feeling this in my hand because it's uh, an exaggerated movement that I don't normally do. So hopefully it will be comfortable for you to make as well. There we go, into the next location. See, I always like to look at what I'm making because it's just so pretty. Now just keep going. There we go. Oh. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> No, um, yep, yeah, there we go. Right, so next location. We're nearly there. So we're doubling our puffs this time again. It's just a way of, look, I'm holding on. It's just a way of creating a little habit of, you know, doing this efficiently, really. The movement of the hook is bigger, I would say. There we go. So we're almost there. Now we have two locations left. So let's see how it goes for putting in two in each location. And I'm thinking mm, it might just be the prettiest if I... Let's have a look. So here, and mm, yeah, there should be one there. Let's just put one. Let's just put one. And not the second one. There you go. I think that's okay. And now, again, we're skipping that chain here, going to the V that's on top of the puff. There we go. Okay. So I think that's okay. We have a nice full puff, uh, you know, full sort of puffy face pad like that. And now we are going to chain and into the first stitch here, picking up the back loop only, we are going to do a single crochet. And I am going to do that all around. So picking up just the back loop, we are going to crochet all around using single crochets and because you're using single crochets there's no need to increase it'll be fine just like that and that will make a nice edge around our face pad if you're making this do please show me I have a Facebook page where you can post your own pictures on it or send me a picture in messenger or something like that uh, there's the links to all my uh, social media on the top of my youtube page and also underneath here in the description box there we go there's also other links to other videos in the description box And I think it looks really pretty because we've got this, look, we've got this edge appearing. Uh, yep, a next stitch. Don't skip them. And then, of course, you'll have to sew in the end. I will show you in a moment how to sew in the end so it's like invisible. So you can't tell where you have finished. It's a little bit tedious picking up the back loops only, but it is very much worth it because I love seeing that little edge appear. And just a few more stitches. Now you could make two of these and then crochet them together 
and then that would make a really thick face pad but you do have to realize you know it needs to dry quickly during the day because otherwise it goes a bit smelly so if you've used it and you put it to dry it should you know dry quite quickly and if it's too thick it won't so this is the last stitch out of that last stitch is that chain coming so I'm going to skip this one go to this V here and I do a slip stitch and that sort of ends the round quite nicely there we go so to do the invisible weaving you attach your you thread it onto your needle oh dear attach it to a needle yes right <laughs> Then you have your V here. We are going to recreate that. So we're going to go under this V here. And then we are going to go back into this V where the yarn is coming out of. And you sort of pull it slightly so it shapes itself as if it was a proper V. And now we are just going to finish by sewing in the end on the back a couple of times doing loop the loop see I always go back a bit when I finish that little sewing there we go generally what I do I keep going until it's done but generally I'd also just do three sew-ins and that's fine now the middle one again important that you uh, sew this in really well because it is your middle if it comes undone but it's a chain four so it should be okay there we go there we are so all that needs to be done is cut this off cut this off and there we go so that's another lovely little face pad finished there and I hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one bye